What's up guys, it's Aristov FPV here with a flight video of the Silver Shadow UAV we've built in the last video. And it turns out you guys really love the build video because my channel isn't the same anymore as it still does grow at a rate of a Falcon X rocket and the video is close to 400,000 views which it'll pass by at one day. But for all you guys that are new here, the channel is about building and flying homemade FPV planes using experimental airlines techniques and coming up with new ideas and improvements to implement those into the next design and keep growing. Everything is featured on the channel including adventurous FPV flights as well as line of sight videos and build videos. But in this video I'm gonna take you guys through the setup and some FPV footage I got after weeks of patience because life outside the channel is sometimes more important. But here we are and here it is, enjoy. So this is how I set my aircraft up. So you got the outer wings here which look a bit different because I did some improvement on the wingtips for additional performance and improved aerodynamics. But here you got the one meter by one centimeter by one centimeter wing spar, which enters through the middle wing like this. And I marked it here and over here to get it centered all the time. So you just want to center it up like this then you want to take your outer wings to connect the cables. Like this. And what you will notice now is that the wing can warp. So what I thought about was having a piece of tape and cover the most critical edges, which are over here, here, and also on the underside. So I'm gonna take a piece of tape and cover the whole leading edge and fold it on the underside right here. So now the warp is eliminated. So I have these landing skids over here to protect the fuselage, the LED over here, and the prop. This weird looking thing has been made to hold the video transmitter up high for improved video signals. So what I thought was having these sticks being glued at the bottom and over here to hold the video transmitter up high, which meant that the antenna cable rests high above the platform and improves video signals where I'm flying very far out or close proximity or behind objects like trees and buildings and stuff for improved video signals with a 600 milliwatt video transmitter. Right before takeoff, you wanna make sure that the center of gravity is approximately one third away in its cord from the leading edge and that the control surfaces would move in the right direction in its left, right, up and down movement. And when you have an autopilot like me, you also want to make sure that when you put it in a stabilized mode and you shake your aircraft around, that the control surfaces would counteract that movement. That was a nice shot. So the way you see this plane fly was exactly how it went at the maiden flight. The aircraft flies a tad nose heavy but doesn't need a huge amount of reflex from the elevator to pitch up and keep level flight. The aircraft does best at making straight lines and mapping patterns when switched to mission modes and the noise isn't that bad since the pusher prop is at a good distance from the trailing edge of the wing. However, when the aircraft gets close to a stall, the prop starts to get loud.
So what you're hearing is that the flow of air that starts to separate from the airfoil meets the prop, and the more it separates, the louder it gets. This is a good indicator to add throttle when you hear this type of noise and prevent a stall. Woo! Add some throttle and just dead stick it. Just came in a bit too hot, too fast. So I'm just gonna try it again. Almost stalled there right about now now i'm just gonna glide it in like this yeah this is the perfect timing and that is it and the very nature of this aircraft with its twin boom pusher nature is that it's a very stable aircraft with a flight controller and without so it can be used as a park flyer to do some basic aerobatics and maybe add some video gear to it but when you want to squeeze the potential out of this aircraft, you want to add a flight controller like me and add some video gear and just fly some distance or do some FPV aerobatics. But this aircraft can do it all. And I'm very pleased at how it turned out. Here is some OSD footage I recorded before it got very dark. I flew up to 29 minutes because it doesn't have an FPV night camera yet, but the main purpose of the flight was to test the maximum distance with the X8R antenna and a 7dB patch on my Tyrannus. It was also to see and measure what the battery voltage would be after the 29 minute flight. So at the 29 minute mark you can see that the battery remains at approximately 55% which shows its capability of flying for an hour. And for some reason the DVR didn't record the stats after disarming the aircraft but the flight was recorded anyway and my maximum distance was 2.67 kilometers which is decent for an FR Sky X8R. So after some weeks have passed by, I decided to really push the range of the 2.4 GHz reception with a swap in transmitter antennas. I installed a Video Aerial Systems 2.4 GHz Yagi antenna with 11 decibels of gains, which got me expecting a range up to 4.5 km with the X8R. It turns out I could fly over 6 km, which is a distance my goggle antennas won't reach, hence the failsafe. This means that I could fly for a lot further, but I just have to get better VRX antennas to really see how far I could push the X8R with the Yagi upgrade. Here is some medium range FPV footage with the HD and DVR modules being powered by onboard BECs for recording as long as I'd like to. The footage testifies its capability in gusty winds and is great for someone to decide if this is the FPV plane they'd like to build next. Anyways, that's it for me. Enjoy the footage and subscribe to the channel for the upcoming recorded flights I did with the Silver Shadow and other FV creations which are more capable. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.